thanks for tuning into No Wine in No Time. I'm your host Dave and today we'll be talking about various wine closures, what they are, and what benefits each of them have. Certainly the days where we think of a screw cap being an inferior quality wine, those days are certainly over. So we're going to talk about each different method and what the benefits of each one are. And we're going to start with the most popular. And the most popular is a good old-fashioned natural cork. Now natural corks have been around for centuries and the reason why they're chosen is they're very elastic, they expand, and they're naturally buoyant. So when a cork is in place, as you can see from this particular one, you can see the wine stain on the very bottom, but you don't see the wine stain extending down the cork itself. That tells us that this bottle had a good seal and that that cork actually did its job, keeping oxygen out and keeping the wine in. Now, when people debate about which type of cork is actually the most green, a natural cork is by far the greenest of all solutions. A natural cork comes from a cork tree. Now, a cork tree is kind of interesting. A cork tree, when it's grown, takes 25 years to reach maturity. At 25 years, you can take and slice the bark, peel it away, and actually punch corks out of the tree itself. Now that process can repeat every nine years for up to 300 years. I don't know any greener process in the entire world. There was one tree, they actually nicknamed Methuselah, and that particular tree was either in Spain or Portugal, and that tree they actually harvested one million corks at one time and the tree kept going on. So that's pretty fascinating. So when we talk about natural corks, this particular one is a natural cork punched from a cork tree. We also can have natural corks that are what I call amalgamated corks. In other words, the cork is natural, but it's ground up and pressed together into uh, kind of a cylinder. So that would be an amalgamated natural cork. Now the next cork that certainly bears mentioning is a synthetic cork. Now a synthetic cork looks very much like a natural cork, but it's made from actually a petroleum-based plastic. Now these are great because they have great flexibility uh, and they also expand to fill in the upper part of the bottle. So they seal very well. But there has been some debate, will the actual plastic itself taint the wine or give it some sort of um, uh, some sort of odd taste. So the next one I want to talk about is one called a vino lock. Now a vino lock is actually a glass stopper. We see this a lot on rosé wines. Obviously it gives a beautiful look to the wine itself. Now how this stopper works is we actually take and peel the plastic off and just use our thumbs to remove it and when it's removed you'll actually see that the stopper itself is kind of T-shaped, made of glass, and has a little silicone ring around it. That ring keeps the wine inside and keeps the oxygen on the outside. So this is a fairly new uh, technique, and uh, one that's catching on, like I said, more on the rosé side than anything. The next one we have is one called a Helix. And Helix is kind of interesting because, let's say we're going to a picnic and we forgot our corkscrew. The helix, actually, when you remove the plastic, you can grab the cork itself and actually twist it out. So look at that. Some of the cork is actually above the glass line and some of it's below. So you can actually twist and pull that out. So that's a bit of a newer technology, too, and one that certainly seems like it's catching on. Finally, let's talk about the dreaded screw cap. Uh, I say dreaded because screw caps have... A bad reputation and there really is no basis in fact for that in the wine world. So when we look at screw caps and I'm going to give you another name for a screw cap. It was actually invented by the French in the 1960s by a gentleman with his last name Stelvin. So this is actually called a Stelvin closure, not a screw cap. So if you're ever on Jeopardy and someone says what's the real name for a screw cap you can say Stelvin closure and maybe you'll win. So the French kind of monkeyed around it with this for a little bit. In 1971, it actually appeared on its first bottle of wine. So screw caps are very utilitarian. Inside you have a, 
uh, a rubber or a plastic ring and the actual screw cap uh, is metal and it's actually pressed onto the top of the bottle itself. It creates an impervious seal. Uh, I've done some wine tasting before where I pulled uh, 10 year old wines that had screw caps and actually had them in the tasting and they were absolutely flawless. So a screw cap works very, very well. There's something else I want to talk about with screw caps and that is usually where you see them is areas furthest away from cork resources. So we talked about corks being really dominant in Europe and coming from Spain and Portugal. Well, let's think about countries like New Zealand and Australia. This is about as far from Europe as you could possibly get. Um, this bottle that we have in front of us, this is Molly Duker's The Boxer, a phenomenal bottle of wine, uh, an excellent quality product, and it has a screw cap. So I just want to kind of you know, buff away that, that myth that screw caps mean cheap wines. That's certainly not the case itself. So, one other thing to talk about uh, with corks, and that is the possibility of cork taint. Um, on occasion, a cork will fail, and this could be any type of cork that we have, synthetic, vino lock, or an actual uh, natural cork itself. If a wine, after the cork is pulled, smells musty or moldy, then there is a possibility that cork has failed and a cork taint would actually have flawed the wine. So, hopefully you enjoyed learning a little bit more about these wine closures and what their functions are. And I hope you'll tune in next time, and soon you'll know wine in no time.